in the workshop, fitting a mechanical lubricator to a Stuart 5A steam engine part 5, making the lubricator work. It sort of works, but there's something wrong with the ratchet or the ratchet pole because it stops working in the same place during each revolution. Which is the last thing you want, it's most important to make sure that a steam engine always has a consistent and reliable oil supply to the cylinder. So the first thing to do is to remove the operating lever, and I'm drilling out the hole above in the actuating arm. When I refit the operating lever, it makes no difference at all. The only way I can get this to work is to press the pole against the ratchet wheel. And as you can see, when I do that, it goes all the way around. So I'm going to remove this pole, complete with its very strange phosphor bronze type spring, and have a look at it. First of all though, I'm just stretching the spring a little bit to tighten it and putting it back in position. Maybe by doing this, I will be able to put more pressure on the pole so it engages with the ratchet a bit more securely. No, that's even worse. Now the spring is too tight around the central shaft and it's not working at all, so really I've made it worse. To be honest, this spring is a bit poor. They used to be made from spring steel and it was a thinner gauge. When I was looking at this spring, I noticed the obvious problem. Can you see it? I'll give you a clue. Look at the edge of the pole that engages with the ratchet. This is a new lubricator pump assembly that I got from Blackgates. And when I compare the two ratchet poles, they're very different. The one on the left is much better defined, with a much sharper point. So the first thing to do is to fit this new ratchet pole and see what happens. And as you can see already, it's going much deeper into the ratchet wheel itself. I'm going to refit the spring and then run the engine and see what happens. This is a very fiddly job indeed. And once or twice I even stuck the spring in my thumb just for good measure. But it's stopped bleeding now so I can carry on. I'll leave you with a shot of the mechanism while I connect the compressed air line to the engine and here we go. And it's still not working. I wonder why. Well, as this is a tutorial, I over-tightened the bolt which holds the pole in position. When I slackened it off, you can see now it works. I'm making sure that both of these bolts are just tight enough, one for the spring and the other one for the ratchet. And here, I'm tightening the lock nut on the other side of the ratchet bolt. And oh dear, it's still not working right. I wonder what the problem could be. Once again, I'm going to slightly slacken off the pole mounting bolt, because by putting the nut on the other end of it, it may have tightened up. Try again. Resisting the urge to smash the thing to pieces with my Viking war axe, I thought it would be a good idea not to do that, so instead I took it apart one more time. And this time I'm replacing the ratchet, because I don't think the ratchet's right either. I've used this type of mechanical lubricator for many years, and I've always found them to be okay. Some people have problems with them, I've had problems with the one-way valve blowing back, but normally once they work, they work for a long time. Here's the spare mechanism that I got from Blackgate's Engineering. Matt gave this to me and apologised profusely for the problems that I'm having. So now I'm going to dismantle this mechanism and remove the ratchet and fit it to the existing drive. I'm not going to separate the ratchet from the shaft itself. I'm taking the ratchet and shaft and I'm going to fit this to the existing mechanism to replace the one that's not working. Let's have a look at this incredibly simple and effective mechanism. In my left hand, I'm holding the one-way valve, this is just a ball valve, and the rest of it is just an oscillating cylinder engine, just like you'd get in a Mamod or any small steam engine. Maybe if I fitted a small flywheel on one end where the ratchet is, and removed the one-way valve so I could admit some compressed air, I'm sure it would work like a small steam engine. But enough of this frivolity, it's back to work. The drive shaft is just threaded into the crank web. So by holding the crankweb securely and turning the shaft in the opposite direction, the shaft comes out of the crankweb. And in exactly the same way, I remove the drive shaft from the crankweb in the pump that's fitted to the engine. But when I tightened the new arm in place, it locked solid. I wouldn't say that these lubricators are professionally made items. 
because it would appear that the parts are not interchangeable. So what I had to do was remove this bit, this is the bearing, which I fitted into the chuck of my Boxford lathe and machined a bit off it. Now it looks like this, the nut part is a bit shorter. I refitted it to the pump, and in this part of the clip I'm refitting the drive shaft into the crank web. And now when I tighten the drive shaft into the crank web, there's just enough clearance for it to work perfectly without any friction. I intend to use the original drive arm, and as you can see, the pawl on this is nice and sharp. Fitting this is quite simple, it just slides onto the shaft, followed by a washer, followed by a steel nut. This steel nut also has a lock nut, and the reason for the lock nut is, the steel nut does not need to be tight, in fact if it's tight it won't work. The way to do it is to fully tighten the small nut, and then back it off half a turn after which you can fit the lock nut to hold it permanently in this position. I'm not fitting the lock nut at the moment because I have something else in mind. In this part of the clip I'm refitting the other ratchet pawl and putting the spring back around the small bolt. I'm refitting the bolt that holds the ratchet pawl in place and once again as shown previously I'm being very careful not to over tighten this, the pawl has to be free to move. The small lock nut still needs fitting on the back of this bolt to hold it in position. But as you can see from this clip, things are looking a lot better. After checking the tightness of the bolt holding the pawl in place, it's time to bend the wire around the small bolt and then clamp that down too. To complete the job, I need to fit the lock nut at the back of the bolt that holds the pawl in place. And in this clip, I'm locating the nut on the bolt using a small pair of surgical forceps. And once the nut was engaged with the thread of the bolt, I'm using this very small spanner to tighten it against the case. This stops the bolt from moving out of position once the pump is running. And now with a final check of the amount of pressure being put on the pawl by the bolt, in this clip I'm moving the actuating arm back and forth to check whether the pump works, and it seems to be okay now. Time to connect the operating arm, connect the compressed air, and off we go. I'll be changing this brass bolt for a steel one in the next episode. So after all that, is it working okay now? Yes it is. Now, at last, there's a lubrication system for the cylinder. If you remember, I didn't fit the lock nut. I'm going to fit this instead. This is a hand wheel. This small hand wheel was initially threaded 8BA and re-threading it 7BA. And once it's fitted to the pump, it has two purposes. One is, you can see if it stops going round, and the other one is, you can turn it manually if you want to inject some more oil into the engine. In service, when the pump's running, the lid will be in place so you won't be able to see the pump mechanism actually working, but you'll always be able to see the small wheel going round. And just to show that it works, I'm moving the pump mechanism by hand using the wheel. The way this works is that one revolution of the crankshaft equals one click of the ratchet. I'm going to slow this clip down so you can see that happening. And that's about it for this episode. I have a working oil pump, which is all I ever really wanted. I hope you've enjoyed this trip into the world of miniature lubricators. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.